Thank you, Terry. Some good thoughts there. And we are standing by for Maryland and Georgia Tech, the second game of our semifinals. And it is time time right now for our starting lineups with public address announcer Larry the starters Harris. now for the second semifinal game of the 33rd Atlantic Coast Conference Basketball Tournament. For Maryland, at guard, a 6'5 junior from Grimesland, North Carolina, number three, Keith Gatlin. For Georgia Tech at guard, a 6'4 junior from New York, New York, number 45, Bruce Dalrymple. For Maryland at guard, a 6'1 senior from Washington, D.C., number 12, Jeff Baxter. For Georgia Tech at guard, a 6'1 senior from Enid, Oklahoma, number 25, Mark Price. For Maryland at center, a 6'8 junior from Glen Allen, Virginia, number 32, Kerry Law. For Georgia Tech at center, a 7-foot senior from Brooklyn, New York, number 22, John Sally. For Maryland at forward, a 6'7 sophomore from Temple Hills, Maryland, number 33, Derek Lewis. For Georgia Tech at forward, a 6'8 freshman from Crestview, Florida, number 20, Tom Hammond. Maryland at forward, a 6'8 senior from Landover, Maryland, number 34, Lynn Bias. For Georgia Tech at forward, a 6'6 sophomore from Towson, Maryland, number 33, Dwayne Farrell. Head coach for the University of Maryland, Lefty Grissel. The head coach for Georgia Tech University, Bobby Crimmins. officials who will work the second ACC semifinal this afternoon. Lenny works in the middle flank by Tom Frame and Paul Hausman. Billy, uh, there's some great individual players, obviously, in this league. In this semifinal, you've got Mark Price, a player who just seems to thrive on turn. Well, he has in four tournaments in his college career. He has won MVP. Last year, of course, the biggest one, winning the MVP, the Everett Case Award, here in the ACC tournament. Price had a great game yesterday. So did John Sally, and Sally seems to be becoming a, an impact player again. Absolutely. It just seems like he's reached his comfort zone on the court. And he is now, he's averaging close to 17 points a game, and he's shooting over 73% from the field. So you can just tell right from that those stats, he has reached his comfort zone. Len Bias uh, did not shoot well last night, but I think he impressed everybody by the fact that he didn't stop working. Well, I ran into an old friend and not a bad basketball player, Oscar Robinson, and he came yeah. over to me and said, that Bias is a player. Now, Len Bias only shot 5 for 14 from the floor, and what Oscar was saying was he saw a complete basketball player, a player that had the ability, when he was struggling from the field, to contribute in other areas, especially if on the boards where he had 13 last night. I think the key to this game, as it has been in the, the last six or seven games from Maryland, the play of their guards. No question in every game recently that they've played well, their guards have come out, been very aggressive at the deep, at the offensive end of the court, and this has opened up the court and allowed Lynn Bias to be more of a team player, and they're not relying on him to just carry them all the way, and you're just seeing the great performance by this Maryland team winning their last five out of six games. Len Bias at 6'8", steps into the center circle against seven-foot John Sally, and we are set to go from Greensboro, North Carolina, the second ACC semifinal. The winner meets Duke tomorrow afternoon for the championship, and it's Georgia Tech and Dwayne Farrell with a basketball. Well, a player that's given Maryland a difficult time is John Sally, so over the, the last few games, so I'm sure they're going to be very conscious, and they'll be rotating a lot of players to defend against him. He's being guarded by Terry Long right now. Freshman Tom Hammonds hits his first shot. Hammonds has, has not played like a freshman since day one. Well, he struggled a little last night, though. He only oh, he had two field goal attempts and made one, so I'm sure uh, Bobby Kearns is very pleased to see him get out of the box early. Gatlin and Baxter were so hot yesterday, especially in the second half. This is Derek Lewis. Line drives one home from four feet. Mark Price. 
Price gets it off to Sally. Baxter took a swipe at him. I like what Long is doing right now defensively on Sally. Outside pressuring him, not allowing him to have those easy passing lanes, and he is just an outstanding passer, Sally. Price works on Baxter. Way short on the jumper, and we'll have a jump ball situation underneath. Alternating possession gives the ball to Maryland. Just good defense forced the tough shot by Price. Baxter and Gatlin in Maryland's backcourt. Gatlin with 18 points and eight assists last night. Already owns the ACC tournament record with 23. He's on a pace to break that if Maryland could win this game and get in the finals. They lost the two regular season games, but both were close. Bias over Dwayne Farrell, who was right in his face. Well, all they did is isolate Bias on the court. He took what the defense gave him, and that was the jump shot. Anytime he gets the ball posted up, though, they will double-team him. Dalrymple baseline, Long and Lewis each got a piece. And it's out of bounds to Georgia Tech. Well, I'd hate to have to guard Dalrymple because he's such a physical player, and he just beats those guards up. Kansas has beaten Oklahoma 72-70. The Sooners gave them fits, and they've had a lot of trouble lately. But Kansas looking more and more like a potential national champion won that one today. Just moving the basketball against the zone. There's the man they have to get the ball to against the zone for those shots. Farrell left alone, buries it tied at four with 18.09 to go first half. I'm sure he's ecstatic to be healthy and playing in this tournament after he was sitting out last year with that big injury. Gatlin working on Dalrymple. Misses his first crack and Sally with the rebound. This is Price. Bad pass, Sally saves it. A uh, bad pass because the good intensity defensively by this Maryland ball club. Dal Ripple comes back out. Now Price wants to set it up again. Georgia Tech's all-time leading assist and theft man. And the second leading scorer, only about 150 points short of Rich Yunkus' all-time record. Farrell, hot early. Just excellent execution. Great poise by the Georgia Tech ball club. They didn't have anything at the offensive end of the court. And their team leader out there, Mark Price, brought it back, set it up, and they got the good shot. Farrell has four of Georgia Tech's six points. He had 30 yesterday. Now he's got a steal. Two on two. Price wants to go all the way and drew the foul from Gatlin. And Gatlin will help him up. Well, on that play, Price, the one thing he was going to do, uh, he'll, we'll take a look at it, and I'll explain as we go along. Farrell, great defense, overplaying. Now, Price sees Gatlin, and he knows he's going to have a problem. He make, he forces the yep. contact, making sure that he's going to get to the foul line. Make sure he leaned into that one. Price has hit 26 straight free throws in the ACC tournament. He loves the pressure of the situation. Last night had a big, big night hitting 85% of his free throws on the season. One thing about this Georgia Tech, we saw them get out and get the running opportunity out of transition. But with the athletes they have, I know Bobby Kremis would like to see his team running and getting out and getting those easy opportunity baskets because you look at their front line, there's some athletes up there for this Georgia Tech team. Eight to four, the Jackets on top. Bias working hard, he wants the basketball. Well, Farrell is doing a great job now denying him the basketball. Now there's the double team. He just goes so high on that jumper. Once he's in position, you're not going to stop. Him. Well, what he did is he got the basketball and turned and shot it so quickly, the double team coming down from Price was not able to get there in time. Four for Len Bias, Maryland's all-time leading scorer. Surpassed Albert King a couple of games ago. Looking to shoot. No, that's what I was just going to say. Price tries to bank one in. Long kept it alive. There's that down ripple. Had it blocked by Lewis. That's a great block by Lewis. The, the thing that he did, though, after it was, besides blocking it, he'll keep the ball in play and his teammates able to get it back. Baxter, and they pick up the foul. A lot of guys bigger than Lewis, who is 6'7", but you have to have great timing to be a shot blocker, and he's got it. He's got that quickness. Maryland down by two. They have the basketball. And I think that's one of the reasons Lefty went to him for the first play of the game to get him involved offensively. Terry Long can't get the jumper, but he does draw the foul. Isn't it interesting to watch this Maryland team now, how that we've seen them now post up Derek Lewis, and they come down and they look to get the ball into Long. A month ago, these guys, the only way they would get the basketball is off the offensive board. That's right. 
confidence. And it seems that Lewis and Long play with much more confidence when the guards are playing well. Not so they expected out of Len Bias. Long hits the free throw. And to this point, we haven't heard anything from Baxter or Gardner. That's right. And yet Maryland is within a point at 8-7. Long way short on that one. This is going to be off Georgia Tech out to the Turks. And Tom Jones will get in the ball game for the first time. And Lewis is going to get a breather. Well, Tom Jones is one of the players in this Turk ball club with Baxter, Gatlin, and Jones that have really emerged and have given that offensive punch to this ball club and have them playing at the level they're playing right now. Well, the way they played in the last three weeks, they can play with anybody. Roy Farrell is just working his tail off, looking to deny that basketball to Bias, and he's got to have a lot of help on the weak side when he fronts him down low because they'll look for that low pass. Baxter with Price on him. Leans into a tough shot. Draws the foul on Price. That's a nice move by Baxter. Well, what happened is Price leaves his feet at the defensive end of the court. Good call by the official. He had made, he committed himself defensively, and Baxter picks up the foul. Defensively, you never leave your feet that way until the man is going up for the shot, and all you do is you go straight up to contest the shot. You don't want to pick up the chief foul. Baxter, the senior out of Washington, D.C., been double figures five of his last six ball games. Boy, was he on fire last night. 21 points on eight out of 14 from the floor, some from downtown. That young man waited a long time, Billy, to get playing time in this Maryland program, and I'm sure he is loving the last part of the senior season. Timeout on the court. 15.37 to go in the first half. Maryland by one. 